Hi everyone, uh, I am Silvia and uh, I am happy to introduce uh, the third episode of our Be Aware, Not Scared series of conversation about life during coronavirus times and what implication these emergencies has in our lives uh, in shaping uh, new ways in which we approach everyday routine. Um, today I am with a group of alumni of IIT uh, living in different places. Um, the first one is Alessandro Roncone, uh, who is the further away from us today and uh, is now assistant professor in robotics at the University of Colorado Boulder, um, close to Denver. Um, we have Jody Saglia, who is uh, chief technology officer of one of the very first IIT spin-offs on moving the technology. And uh, we have Gabriele Lignani, head of the Lignani lab at the University College London, where they focus on uh, finding new gene therapy approaches for uh, intractable neurological diseases. So thank you everybody for being here today. And uh, last but not least, Marco Munga, IIT HR director, is part of the conversation. And uh, I am now leaving you the stage, Marco. Thank you, Silvia. Thank you, everybody, of course, again. And uh, we we have already met somebody from the US in the last uh, meetings. So uh, I, I'd like to start uh, exactly with Alessandro because Alessandro has in front of him a long uh, day walk. <laughs> we are more close to the dinner time. So <laughs> if you can tell us uh, about uh, the situation in Denver. Denver is, uh, I don't know exactly what is the situation in Denver because last yeah. time we met somebody <laughs> from Boston and uh, he told us about the situation in Massachusetts. I don't know about Colorado and Denver and, and from your point of view, your experience and your, how this uh, phase is impacting in your uh, job. Yeah, so um, I'd say that here the situation is uh, much better than the, the East and the West Coasts. Uh, right now, the worst uh, in the US is uh, New York and all the surrounding states. Whereas here we have uh, the situation more or less under control in that uh, uh, there are some cases, but the healthcare system is not as trained yet. And uh, um, I think that uh, uh, the main difference with respect to uh, Italy is that uh, the US was lucky because all of this time a couple of weeks later, right? So uh, we could see uh, what happened uh, in Italy and stuff like that. And uh, um, the municipality, the university, uh, the state took preventive measures relatively early. So uh, the university closed uh, entirely, uh, basically 25 days ago, something like that. <clears throat> uh, as soon as they got the first uh, coronavirus case, uh, they shut down the entire university. And uh, originally, the, uh, the, this university is uh, 30,000 students. So originally, they basically said that there's not going to be any more uh, in-class, uh, in-person teaching. And uh, we, we, we're going to move to remote teaching. And uh, uh, after a couple of days, basically when the second coronavirus case happened, um, they uh, decided that uh, uh, everybody was supposed to work from home. So um, after that second, uh, I'd say, round of decisions, uh, this has affected also our research because now we can't go in the lab, we can't work with our robots, and so on and so forth. So, um, but uh, also thanks to that, like this, uh, this university is 30,000 students and the city is 100,000 students. So basically one third of the population of this uh, uh, city is students. And uh, um, thanks to that and thanks to other measures from the municipality, right now the situation is more or less under control here. So uh, we are uh, on quarantine, uh, we are in lockdown, but uh, um, the situation is, is still manageable. Thank you, Alessandro. Uh, nice to hear that uh, your situation is better than ours because we are little bit more in, uh, let me say, in trouble in this moment. Uh, before uh, jumping to Jody, who is in Italy as uh, we are, so probably the same experience that we are living, uh, it's the same he's uh, living now. Uh, Gabriele, can you tell us something about the UK? Uh, UK, we are not in a good situation at the moment. Actually, yesterday there was the highest increase of cases, death. Uh, I think that is around 
950 people died yesterday. So it's the, and the majority is in London, obviously. We are, as, uh, as Alessandro said, also here two weeks um, uh, behind Italy. So probably now and the next week will be the peak of, of the cases, hopefully, because then it, it can slow down. Uh, the measure that they, 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 they put in place, the lockdown that they put in place, probably they did a bit late compared to what Alessandro said. And, uh, and at the beginning, because there's, there's like a British tradition, they were like suggesting the measurements instead of say, you have to do it. Like they suggest not to go out. And after a few days, they decide that probably was not the best. And so they decide to do a proper lockdown like in Italy. Uh, actually, I was quite uh, surprised of the reaction of, of, of the reaction of the university because actually the university closed before the government put the the, 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 the proper lockdown. Actually, a week before we decided, so the UCL decided to stop uh, all the research, and uh, two weeks before the lockdown, they stop all the uh, teaching and do all everything online and remotely and um, basically they they really not close all the research but they close all the research that is not uh, for COVID-19 so they, they they change completely lab and department to work on that to find new vaccines or new new possible therapies they create a new kind of ventilators so they recreate basically a, a research field yeah, and they, they, they decide to shut down all the others. So I think that the, the response of a university is that it was completely independent by what was going on around uh, and what the government was saying. It was like really, really unexpected and, and very good in this case. Okay, thank you, Gabriele. Uh, something similar is happening also in IIT where we are trying to, let me say, shift our research to something that is more close to the research uh, against uh, COVID-19. And I think this is that all the scientific community worldwide, I think, is making the same thing. Uh, Jody instead is uh, playing a, a very important role within the company, not... Uh, OK, I think uh, he's uh, still a researcher, at least in the heart and the mind, <laughs> uh, even if now he's more close to the business also. But uh, uh, can you tell us about uh, how this strange phase again is uh, affecting your activities, your company, your specific job? Because um, you are a CTO, so what does it mean that you are very involved in uh, the development of your products, of your activities? Thank you, Jody. Yes. Um, so, yeah, the, the situation in Italy, we all know uh, that is uh, quite, quite critical. It's been quite critical for since, since quite a few weeks. Um, for companies, um, it's been quite a um, quite a strong hit because uh, companies couldn't could not operate anymore uh, from from since quite a few uh, days. Uh, we fortunately we are still in the in among those companies that are allowed to run some operations uh, because we are a medical device company. So we we. We fall under um, in the group that is still allowed to to operate and to to run the, the activities and business. Um, but having said that, in fact, the, the problem is that, uh, for example, in our case, most of the sales salespeople are based in uh, Lombardy uh, and especially in the Mi Milan area. And because of this, in fact, uh, they were they. They couldn't do any any activity uh, since the very beginning of the of the crisis. So they were forced to stay at home. Uh, we were forcing them not to come to Genova for meetings and stuff because because everybody was afraid of uh, possibly uh, spreading the virus. So we had to stop them. And besides that, also all the the customers, potential customers. Uh, which in our case are hospitals or clinics or rehab centers, uh, stopped um, and cancelled all the meetings very quickly. Uh, so we, it was a very, very bad 
it is still uh, quite a bad situation for us in terms of business um, as a company. For me in particular and for my team, uh, as, as you said, Marco, I'm, uh, I'm the CTO, so I'm, I'm managing the R&D activities and the development of products and solutions for the company. And uh, in my case, um, activities can, can still run and uh, especially um, I, I am not usually linked uh, to to the business cycles, so I I, I am more uh, the the type of I run more the type of activity which is strategic. So in these kind of moments, for example, uh, they become somehow uh, key, and uh, all the efforts can be focused on on developing and rushing up in, in developing new things so that you can actually be ready with new stuff as soon as you uh, as, as soon as the crisis is over. So we had to, uh, we didn't have in place an, a, a smart work approach when the crisis arrived. And so we had to somehow rush and, and set up things so that the people could actually work from home. Uh, but we did that, we are a small company, so it wasn't such a big effort uh, overall, but um, we did that uh, very quickly and from like, Day one, we were able to to have all the people sitting at home with their laptops and and computers and and keep working from uh, on the projects and on on the new uh, products directly from home. So for my case, uh, we never stopped. Um, but of course, business wise, it's it's becoming tough. And one of the opportunities that is, uh, somehow seems to be uh, rising up is the. Um, uh, to develop solutions for uh, telerehabilitation and telemedicine, which is obviously something which was already uh, quite important before the crisis, but it's becoming even more important now because people are, of course, forced to stay at home and they cannot go to see the doctor, they cannot go to, we operate in, in the rehabilitation market, as probably someone, some of you may know. Uh, but they cannot go to their rehab facilities, they cannot go to hospitals, to clinics. So providing solutions for them to do it at home, it's, it's actually key. So we are also looking at that technologies and that kind of solutions now as a possible business opportunity. Great, Jody, thank you. Uh, okay, do you have, yeah, let's I can I, can I follow up to Jody's comment? Um, sure, sure. I have a question for you. Uh, you said that uh, you are uh, like shifting the weights in terms of uh, the capabilities and the technologies you are developing uh, as a consequence of uh, coronavirus. Are you uh, planning uh, like the long game? Are you, are you foreseeing uh, uh, a long-term change of your business or is it more of a short-term response to, to the needs that the society has right now? Um, some uh, some of the feedback that we're getting from the, especially the U.S. market, which uh, it was already something that we uh, that we were getting as a, as an input from the market and from our customers even before the crisis, but now it's becoming more more and more um, uh, strong. Uh, it's about uh, the, having solutions that can allow. Uh, people not to travel around uh, can allow uh, doctors to to use technologies even which are installed in, in in remote places. So, for example, there is a lot of uh, hospital groups in the U.S. Uh, which have many facilities. For example, in terms of uh, in terms of rehab, uh, but they do not have uh, highly skilled uh, professionals, health professionals, and doctors uh, in every single facility. And um, so they, they, they are now turning to us and, and asking, OK, so can you provide solutions which allow us to have, for example, the devices in, in every single facility or in many of them, but still allow the, the doctors and the highly skilled professionals be able to use it from a remote uh, location because they have it in, in the main hospitals, in the main facilities of the group and not in everyone. And so this is actually something that was already true before the crisis, but uh, now people realize that uh, we are so weak in terms of, you know, we, we are used to our freedom and uh, the way we, we operate and the way we travel around, but this might not be true anymore, uh, or at least it might change, you know, after the, the crisis. 
and uh, so people are now looking at solutions to to somehow somehow get stronger and be able to operate even in case of such a such a situation so it, it's pro possibly a long a long term business uh, evolution for us I have a question for Alessandro. It's more like a curiosity how uh, it's working now with the fundings for research in uh, what, what's happened with the funders. Because in now UK, there are like, they're still deciding what they, they're going to do. They basically, they the main uh, funders already say that they will approve any no cost extension of, of project. So it means that you, you don't have the money to pay salary of the people that uh, they, they should work, but you can extend the project. But now there are some petition and some uh, discussion going on to trying to uh, to have cost extended project because obviously in this month that we are not working, we are not doing any experiments. Uh, we we still have external funding, so we we need still to, to hit the deadline and uh, we have to finish our our work. So I don't know how we will work that because it depends, I think, for each funders. But yeah. uh, we'll be a lot of money that will be used for this cost extension. Yes, yeah, so uh, that's a good question. And uh, um, here it heavily depends on the funding agency, given that uh, uh, there are multiple uh, uh, entities that uh, that give funding to funding to universities uh, traditionally uh, the more science uh, is uh, through the national science foundation and uh, which is the biggest uh, and also the most important uh, source of funding for academia in general and in that case they have already said that they are going to um, warrant uh, no cost extensions to every grant um, i don't think i'm not aware of any cost extension uh, yet um but uh, uh, for now we have that which is nice <laughs> um the other funding uh, opportunities usually for um a research that is more technology ready um are still up in the air in terms of what is going to happen which is usually the dod the department of defense and stuff like that um and uh, um i at this point uh, we don't know uh, what is going to happen with that. Um, I don't have any funding through them, so uh, I'm not necessarily concerned. But uh, um, that's another big part of the funding landscape in the US. One thing that has happened is that uh, um, there has been a lot of new funding coming, uh, new funding opportunities uh, coming uh, as a response uh, to coronavirus the crisis. Um, and, uh, uh, to uh, stimulate uh, economic recovery after all of this is ended. So um, there's plenty of interesting opportunities that are happening right now. Uh, more, most of them with a short timeline. So they are trying to involve uh, companies and academia uh, on uh, six month projects to speed up, to ramp up production of masks and uh, uh, PPE. Um, or uh, non-medical content measures such as uh, robots in hospitals. I'm obviously talking about my perspective because I'm a roboticist, but uh, such as uh, robots uh, in hospitals that can take care of patients uh, without the physical presence of the medical personnel. So there's plenty of uh, these very small uh, uh, projects uh, with uh, a quick turnaround, and uh, they're also starting to fund uh, longer term projects uh, and they, they talk about uh, road mapping and uh, how technology and research is going to be shaped in the long term as a consequence of, of this, just not to be caught uh, in a similar uh, crisis again. And uh, um, so it's, uh, it's uh, I'm literally bombarded by email for funding opportunities right now and it's pretty hectic. hectic. Um, but uh, I also feel that as researchers, we also have sort of a duty uh, to give back to society. And this is, a, this is a, a, I think, important for us uh, to, to be able to, to, as I said, give back when we can. Yeah, from my point of view, that is more, I'm doing more research in, uh, in neuroscience uh, that is not really related to that. Uh, I, I foresee big problems on fundings in, in the future. I'm working quite a lot with the charities also, my fellowship is paid by a charity. They are the only one that contact me and say, OK, we give you a cost extension 
so I can I, they can increase uh, increase my my fellowship and pay my salary. But they say that they have big troubles because they have to cancel all the fundraiser events. So for the next round of grant or fellowship, they they will not have enough money to probably carry on. So in UK is a big problem in the charity world because uh, if the, all the money are are obviously uh, diverted to the, this and uh, it's correctly diverted to this this uh, issue, but the other charities working on other another field that will uh, will have bigger big problems in the future. Thank you, Gabriele. I have a question for you two who live in uh, abroad, if we say not in Italy. And the same question for both of you. Uh, it is very simple because, I mean, for sure in the US, I don't know what about UK, but I think it's quite similar. You have a long tradition in terms of donors, no? That means that uh, a huge part of the research in these uh, countries are based uh, on the private uh, funding uh, activities and uh, initiatives. We can't say the same in Italy and, uh, and uh, Jody knows very well, but all of us know very, very well this fact. Uh, do you hear around you, do you listen to you a debate among the people about the role of the research and science in our life? Because in Italy, uh, now you, you can find uh, any time uh, in TV and uh, on the newspaper, uh, scientists who tell uh, their uh, opinion about uh, the current situation, how we can overcome, how we have to invest more in research, in science, and so on. And also how we have to take decisions, uh, uh, let me say, uh, based on the data instead of uh, based on something different. Do you, do you see in UK and the US that this kind of discussion, public discussion, I mean, is uh, growing in this moment or not? Uh, Alessandra, I can uh, start, yeah. but uh, in UK is a bit different because there is not too much uh, discussion about this also before, because is in, uh, in there, there, basically there is no discussion of uh, the, the rule of science in general. And uh, there are no movement, uh, not big movement uh, against science, uh, and there is not uh, a lot of, for example, TV transmission about uh, about these topics. Also before the crisis, for now during the crisis, there are some scientists that speaks, but it's quite uh, a normal things here. And also the government is always, in general, never take decision without the scientific advisors that are formed by, by also member of the, the Royal Society and the, 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 the fellow of the Royal Society. So traditionally, the UK always listen before to science and then, and then, uh, and then take the political uh, action following science. And there are not a lot of discussion about what is the rule of science, how is, uh, we have to follow science or not, it's, it's quite is a tradition that uh, they have they want to follow science and they trust in science if i i think that is was this the question right you wanted to to see how the sciences uh, the, the perspective of sciences is being felt by people like at home for example mm -hmm. yeah can i um, so yeah, to follow up on that, uh, um, I think that uh, in the US is uh, is very similar. Sometimes I see I see the UK as a, a good middle ground between the US and Europe uh, in terms of uh, of uh, of society in general. But uh, um, I'd say that here uh, people tend to listen. Obviously, this is a very big and a very diverse country. So uh, there, and it's also a very a country of extremes, right? So uh, there are people that are uh, really educated and uh, they believe in science, and uh, on the other way, like on the other side of the spectrum, there are people that are not, and uh, they believe uh, they don't believe in science, they don't believe in all of this. But uh, um, from what concerns like globally the country, I have this feeling that uh, science uh, is usually regarded with respect, 
uh, from when I started uh, this position, I'm also seeing that uh, we have uh, our own opportunity to 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 kind of set the agenda uh, in DC. Um, obviously, right now I'm a junior faculty. I, I I don't do much with that, but I see all of my senior uh, faculty around me doing that. Like they go to DC and uh, they talk to senators and stuff like that. And uh, um, this is in general. For what concerns uh, this specific uh, uh, problem, um, you probably know um, what the, the president of this country is doing, uh, but uh, uh, which is again, I don't want to be political, but uh, at least it's debatable. Um, but uh, uh, the, the the funny thing about it uh, is that uh, I have this feeling that it yeah it ends there. So it ends with the politicians and uh, one of the people that. Uh, um, have risen to a uh, fame uh, as of late is uh, Anthony Fauci, uh, which is the um, director of the National Center for Infectious Diseases. And uh, um, this uh, this guy is basically the beacon of hope for the whole country. So he's the one that is sitting always behind uh, Trump when uh, Trump makes any public speech. And uh, he has uh, basically he has become a meme with the fan club and, and people that follow him because uh, uh, he's uh, right now uh, the serious source of information and the person the country can rely on. And, uh, and so that's, that's, that's the funny thing about this. Um, so um, I'd say that uh, um, as a structure, the country uh, trusts science. Um, Politicians uh, are politicians, so uh, whatever happens uh, in politics uh, is uh, is uh, a usually a consequence of their voter base. So that's different. But uh, in terms of of the, the the underlying structure, I think that science is still regarded um, very well. Thank you, Alessandro. Last question before leaving. Uh, to Jody, because Jody is not only a top manager of a company, he's also an entrepreneur because uh, you are a shareholder of a company. Uh, this experience is uh, changing something inside you about your role in terms of, uh, uh, we say, social responsibility, in terms of how you lead your people. Well, uh, Somehow, yes. Uh, let's say that this this experience is contributing to um, so this journey that I that I started a few years ago is it is actually is that it has actually been quite a journey. And let's say that this particular uh, moment and this particular crisis is actually contributing to uh, the change inside of me. Um, and particularly, I mean, you realize. Um, uh, what, what you you really go back down to what are the, the the basic values in life, right? So because you basically everything in such cases fall apart. You cannot you cannot as I was saying earlier, you cannot you're not free anymore as you were before. Um, you are you you're forced to to certain strict rules and you cannot enjoy life as you were enjoying it before. You cannot run activities and businesses as you were doing it before. And there is and, and certain things come first. So um, there's no space and room for uh, for uh, um, things which uh, which are not really of essential importance for people's life and, and safety and health. And, and here now you need to focus really on ensuring that uh, the humankind somehow, uh, okay, I'm exaggerating, but uh, the, the humankind is going to survive, right? So it, you need to, to work for and, and develop solutions and, and services to ensure that people can, you know, still live uh, a certain a life with a certain level, quality level. So, um, yes, I, I think, um, I, I might uh, start this journey again uh, in the future, uh, and I believe that there is there are challenges. There are certain challenges that that we as, as humans we face uh, in several areas. Healthcare is surely one big area, a big field, full of cha of challenges that we still need to uh, to fight with. And um, there is uh, climate change and other things and, and food uh, availability and mobility. There is a lot of things that, that, that humans still need to fix 
in this in in society and i think that i will try to focus um and, and we are already doing it of course with with this company that we are uh, that we are running uh but uh, even more in the future i will try to focus on on challenges that will somehow really have an impact on on the way people live and and the quality of life of, of people uh, also regarding the sustainability of what we do and and how we live right okay so on this final note i would just add let's hope that we are able to actually take this chance to to use this period of disruption to to actually um change something for the better in our little bubbles uh, in the way we are uh, in the way we can so if nobody has anything else to add um i would just thank you again for taking the time today to have this quick conversation and uh, and we hope to see you soon in iat maybe when this is going to be over and uh, thank you again everybody thank you thank, thank you everybody. everybody bye Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. See you next time.